Hi, this is Journey. Welcome to Gold Fever Radio. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank, and it ain't that long. Well, cheers, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on which part of the world that you're from. It's Wednesday once again. It is April the 10th, 2024. Welcome everybody from Radio World. What's happening? It is Wednesday, hump day, whatever you want to call it, hump day. Yeah, you like that day, don't you? A lot of humping going on on Wednesdays. Could be humping going on on Thursdays, too. You never know. Anyway, there's only 265 days left in this year. It's just flying right by. I see some of you people out there in the in the uh, chat room there. See, today is National Erase Self-Negativity Day. Huh. I blew that one since I got up this morning. It's National Farm Animals Day. It's National Cinnamon Crescent Day. It's National Siblings Day. And it's National Encourage a Young Writer Day. Okay. Let's see, on this day, history, 1912, the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage. 1849, the safety pin was patented that long ago. Let's see, 1633, bananas went on sale for the first time in London. Wow, they've been around a long time, the more bananas. Let's see, if it's your birthday today, happy birthday. You share birthdays with John Madden. Of course, he died in 2021, but he would have been 85 years old. Oh, he was 85 when he died, excuse me. Steven Seagal, he's 72. Let's see what else is going on here. We had our last metal detecting hunt last Saturday. We gave away all the prizes, stuff like that. So that's done for the season. This summer is approaching, and winter visitors have pretty well all split and skedaddled out of here skedaddle that's one of them cool words you know skedaddle uh let's see so uh yeah winter visitors leaving we've had a lot of rain this uh this season here out here the dirt's starting to dry out a little bit i was out there what yesterday i think it was and uh didn't get any gold but was out sampling and playing around and it's starting to dry out a little bit uh, the new claim is back from BLM, so that's all good to go. So if you're a club member, you, those will come out in the next newsletter, I believe, on the 1st. Everybody that's uh, club members will get the next or the uh, new claim. That's up there in the in the uh, loss, or the Gold Basin area where media rights are found. Oh, I did some cool things with some of the media rights that I found. I've been putting them in these Riker boxes. Look at that. See, Janon, that's what you wanted. Look at that. Meteor rights tells you all about them. But see, so I've been doing that there. Putting them in cool little boxes like this here. Uh, the ones that will fit in there. Some of them are too big. They won't fit. Let's see. If you're not a club member, you can become a club member. You go to goldfeverradio.com. Goldfeverradio.com. Okay. That's all I got for that. Let's see who's all poking around here. Poking. Poking around. Paul, Paul's generally first, aren't you, Paul? You're first. Richard Duke, hello. Patty's Adventures, welcome. Richard Duke, Janon. Neil Young. Neil Young's going to sing us a song. Uh, how do y'all? It finally stopped raining here in Pencil, Pencil, Kentucky, huh? Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Terry Curry, hello. Uh, four hours. Huh. Oh, that's right. We had uh, the eclipse. If you guys got to see the eclipse. I saw the one they had. I think it was 2017. Those are pretty cool if you're right in the path of it to see that total darkness like that. This one was better. The one that I was in, total darkness, was only like about two minutes. This one was, I think, was over four minutes or something. So that was pretty cool. You people up there in Texas, I think, got to see more of it and taken off in that path anyways uh mark hello 
TJ, hello. Uh, Louis Humberto, hello. You're from uh, <clears throat> Chile, it looks like. I can't read them other things, but from Chile, that's a long ways away. Chile. Yeah. But anyways, welcome. Glad you guys tuned in. We do have a guest. Can you believe that? Somebody was out in camp, this, uh, stopped by the other day, an old prospector, so we'll talk to him. And uh, I must have nodded off, didn't notice it at all. Oh, yes, you didn't notice it at all. Well, thank you, uh, Miss Patty. Okay, let's find our guest. We got a guest here, so let's just get right to that and uh, bring a guest in here. Let's add him right there. He is, ta-da. How you doing? I'm doing well, Jack. How are you? Hey, all right. I even hear you, too. Hear you and see you. That's a good sign. <laughs> uh, so how you been? I, I seen you a couple days ago. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you fine, yes. All right. So for those that don't know you, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Uh, my name is Joe Otto. Um, I'm a gold miner in Nome primarily a beach miner, but uh, I've worked on a, a couple of the gold chips um, up there. And uh, um, right now, I yeah, I run around the country in the off season and I go to different mines and uh, experience that. So that's where I'm at today. And that yeah, was the other day when I came down to see Jack. Yeah. You, went down, you stopped by, you spent a few days out here. We went out to the desert. You said you never did any desert prospecting before. No, it was interesting, and uh, yeah, um, Jack uh, got us a setup of a what you call it, a dry wash set up a dry washer for us, and one day and then another day we was a uh, uh, metal detecting a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was a uh, I enjoyed it, and Jack showed me a lot of uh, how the gold falls out of the mountain and down into the uh, into the washes and what to look for. So a little was different a than beach mining, yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So when you're beach so, yeah. mining, we know what, how you mine out here. How do you beach mine? Okay, well, up uh, up in Nome, you have uh, the ocean keeps churning the gold up and washing up on the beach, and the tundra melts and also releases the gold down onto the beach. So you have a, a couple different zones where you're going to find the gold near the water's edge and right where the tundra stops and meets the sand. Um, and there's different signs you look for, uh, some purple sand, black sand would be awesome, but, uh, yeah, mostly purple sand. And if you, you find those little clues and you take samples along the way and, uh, you can find some, you can find some good amount of gold in a day. Um, if you know what you're doing, but it takes time to learn what you're doing, like, just like anything else. So, so what kind of equipment do you got to run to, uh, on, for the beach type stuff? Well, you know, we just use, we use a high banker and we use a, um, the matting's a little different. We use the, the keen green uh, ripple matting and then a thin, uh, um, a small section of thin uh, uh, miner's moss um, at the top end. And the, the box is going to be a little bit wider, giving a little bit more displacement for the water because the gold is very small. So you need it to drop out. And uh, um, yeah, and then the, the, then the hopper box to uh, um, put your material in to, with the water head, the water jets in there to get it all turned up for you nice um and you run it at a moderate speed you don't have big giant riffles and stuff like that in there um like you would on uh, the boxes that you would run down here or in interior alaska you know, inland um because the gold is so very fine it's, uh, flower gold it's the finest flower gold you're going to find out there flower yeah i remember being known there i think it was in 07 that ran the beaches and those beach boxes there's no river. It's just carpets. All they put in there, and just yeah, water just kind of trickles down. And yeah, but that, you can get a lot of that, a lot of it there. You know, we get um, three to ten grams a day, depending on how much material you can run. Um, you're going to get about a gram a yard or better, depending on the the material you find in your, your source. You know, um, but yeah, once you set up and everything, three to ten grams a day is uh, is very doable. And even more, you can get. Uh, there's guys out there getting ounce, but they're running a lot of material. So that's pretty cool. 
so somebody asked, is the beach an open claim or do you got to have claim for the beach or how does that work? Um, parts of the beaches are claimed. Most of each beach, East Beach is a, uh, um, belongs to Native Corp. Uh, so it's controlled by the, the peoples of Alaska. Um, but there are part of West Beach, um, there are recreational areas. There's about, uh, I'm guessing it's about, I think it's about five miles from the Port of Nome going west is recreational. And then from there on, it is, uh, um, uh, prep. they got claims on them. So um, ooh, that's a rough number. Don't take that. I think it's about five miles out, if I remembered right. So, but there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of place out there to, to dig for sand, though. So anybody could just set up there then that's up there and, and as long as you got the equipment and run and get that, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, um, on the West beach, they're right off a of port. Um, you'd come, you'd come down onto the beach and there's every summer there's between 10 and 30 people that have their beach boxes. They'll have their truck parked there. They'll camp out on the, the beach for whatever period of time they're up there for. And there's a, a, a pond behind the, behind the tundra berm that you can pump fresh water to from. So you have a nice water source there. You have a little protection from the wind and uh, um, it's a common area that everybody uses. Yep. So, so how, many, how many people are there about in, in, a, in a, say a given summer or given day or something? Well, the average, I would say probably about 20 or 30 that are set up along the beach, but then there's more that have, um, places uh, inland a little bit that you know, they rented from people that they'll have their recirculating equipment set up there and they'll bring material home. Um, yeah, so there's, gosh, I was 30 to 50 people out there mining almost every day and that's just on the beaches and that's not in the water. Um, that's a different story altogether, the dredging out there, so. So where are you at? Are you up in Winnemucca now? Oh, yeah. Here, I'll tell you, here's my my uh oh, you're, you're, my hacienda for the day or for the week and uh i've got uh i've got the mountains behind me here so yep i'm up in winnemucca nevada and uh, we'll be uh setting some equipment up on a mine up here for the next couple of months and then i'll be up in may 15th i'll be back up in Nome for a few days um and uh yeah so i've got a, i've got a busy summer i've got a busy summer so but I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change it for the world. Anybody that wants to pursue prospecting, you know, taking little bites. This is, I'm, I consider myself somewhere retired. I'm in my sixties. You know, I've paid my dues. I've raised my kids and stuff. And, uh, you go out and live life, uh, enjoy yourself. It's, uh, it's very doable. I've got a, you know, for me, I got a nice tent. I can't rent a, 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 a hotel every night. Um, that gets expensive. So 30 bucks a night, you get a nice campsite. Um, I got a beautiful two room tent. My partner's got the other side of the tent and uh, we've got all the amenities we need and, uh, and you can do it. So it's always a way to go out there in the morning. What, what a life, living the life, living the dream. It is. It's so peaceful and you can disconnect a lot of times, you know, and especially when you're out at the creeks or on the beach and yeah, just disconnect, disconnect from everything. All your worries are left behind. So that's cool. Randy's Treasures Adventures. Welcome. So up in Winnemucca, what so what kind of mining are you going? Because that's different mining than the beach stuff. So what are you going to do there? Well, I'm I'm not going to actually be mining here. Um, the company I'm working with, uh, we're bringing in equipment from Las Vegas and setting it up on a particular mine site. Um, so my job is to get the equipment there and set up the the mine we're on. <coughs> is um, it's not hard rock, but you know, you use your excavator to, to dig up the material and then they have to run some of the material through a crusher to liberate the gold because it's locked up in the matrix. Um, then they run it through their wash plants. Um, and uh, I believe this is, he's at a, I haven't seen the, pla uh, seen the plant yet, but I believe it's a floating wash plant. So they flood a lagoon and the wash plant is a floating wash plant. So it'll be interesting when I see it. I, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I should be there. Well, I will be there in a week for sure because our equipment's coming on the 16th here at Farm. Cool. Yeah, I've been up Winnemucca a few times. That's a nice area. I kind of like it up there when there's no snow. <laughs> yeah. You had some claims up here uh, some years back, didn't you? Yeah, I used to have some claims years and years ago. That's 
uh i didn't get to play a lot up there but it, it's a nice area up and through there and yeah i enjoyed that now this uh, is a, a, a silver state oh hold on that, that was an alarm so i didn't miss the show jack <laughs> <laughs> prickly prickly prick prospecting that sounds like a great way to go about life yeah, your little dog had a few of those. She's got a little tiny dog, and uh, he set him out. Set her out of the truck there, and in about ten seconds, her paws are covered those little buggers and those burrs, and yeah, Did you get them all yeah, out of there. Yeah, I kind of just had to use a brush and kind of brush them out, and then I figured I'd let him pick the rest of them out overnight, you know. So, but yeah, he got them all out. He, he looked pretty miserable, pretty miserable, just standing there, didn't want to walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, just that desert, you know, one thing about the desert, everything sticks to you, and what don't stick to you, well, like you got the cactus stuck in your boot, or, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. It builded, bite yeah. You, bite you, pokes you, pricks you, stings you, one of the, something that yeah. comes in that desert, so. But, uh, yeah. So we didn't get to do a lot of detecting and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, if you would have stuck around more days, you guys could have probably, we would have sat you up with some material, dry washers, and just let you shovel the hell out of stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah. But well, I, I travel a lot, Jack. I'll, I'll be back. I'll come back to see you for sure. With a, with a detector so you can detect and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I tried. Mine was broken, wasn't it? I'm, I'll, have to, I'll have to upgrade, yeah. too. I'll have yeah. to upgrade, too. And then you just camp out there, and then I'll just come out and visit you. <laughs> okay, yeah. You mean yeah. right out on the desert, out on the claim? Yeah, just camp right there on the claim. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be there's awesome. A few, there's a few places out there people camp out out on the claims out there. And yeah, a little, nice. there's, there's some areas that are just off the road that were, that were pretty flat, you know, so. Oh, well, that's that one. There's another area that I'd take you to next time that's better for metal detecting areas. It's got a lot of flat spots, too, where we go. Well, that sounds like a, that sounds like a good plan. I'll, I'll make sure away. I can make room for that. Yeah. So uh, so how long you been prospecting for? What got you started? I got started watching Gold Fever on TV um, from George Massey. You know, he... Uh, he uh, started the uh, uh, Outdoor Channel and the GPA Gold Prospect Association. And I was a father raising five children, so I watched that show for about three or four years. And I had the bug just like everybody else did. And uh, uh, finally, in uh, 2012, the children were old enough, and uh, I had enough uh, money to save up where I was able to go up to the Cripple River camp up in Nome, Alaska. And I spent a week up there, uh, you know, the, they, they give you a beach claim, and uh, they, like I told you, when you look for signs for gold on the beach and in process that material you'll find, well, I didn't know that at the time, and I uh, I dug my claim, which is uh, 20 feet wide, and from the shore to the uh, tundra wall, I dug that whole thing up in four days at sea level. I'm talking two, three, four feet of sand, rocks, everything. I excavated everything. <laughs> but uh, um, I had a good time. I, I found a lot of gold, and I came home with next to nothing because I didn't know how to – I know how to I found out how to recover, but I didn't know how to save it. And, uh, you know, I, and you, everybody's always afraid on their first pans that they're going to lose that little bit or they didn't find it there, you know. And uh, so you have that bug in your head. So I just kept going back to I was able to keep the gold in my pan and put it in my jar and bring it home. And yeah, so I've been going up there every year since 2012. And, uh, last year I bought property up there and, uh, I built a little house for myself and yeah. So I, I have a place to stay when I go up there now. Wow. That's sweet. Well, let, let's bring back some memories. I my job and I made up my mind. Oh, we had a computer. Oh, no. Can <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? Can you hear that? I got metal detectors up the old year. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get a four-wheel drive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You'd be better off me. So I like that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I was look, trying to find some stuff from. Uh, I used to have some. Who, stuff. who was that? That was a uh, blueberry. Uh, blueberry. What's uh, sang the song and played that? His name was Blueberry something. Yeah, he passed away about eight nine years ago. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the guy with the blueberry bounce. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I would do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, no. Yeah, that guy is, uh, you know, the guy that sang that is actually, he's Australian. And, uh, oh, he is he? Know anything, yeah, and he doesn't know anything about gold. He's kind of a scuba diver. And, and that's what he does. But, uh, but yeah, that was, a, that was a gold fever. Yeah, gold, 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 gold. Yeah. Well, they had another one, a, a, a prospecting America, and uh, yeah, T Tom Massey did Gold Fever, and uh, um, his brother help me out with the name. Um, Perry, Perry Massey. Perry Perry Massey. He did uh, Prospecting America. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was that the new right. Prospecting America? Yeah. Right. That was that was what that was called. His was Prospecting America. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I watched both of the shows on uh, on my Saturdays on my. Yeah, for quite a few years. Yep, yeah, nope, that's uh, a lot of people. That's kind of how people got their start back in those days, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, there's quite the history. I used to have a, uh, I used to have stuff from the buzzard, and uh, I don't know what, and oh, Buku. Oh, yeah, Buku, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. So yeah. I've never met him. Yeah. And George, George had passed away um, before 2012 because uh, they had his marker up at camp there. And uh, his gravesite was just behind camp where he's, uh, he had a little cabin. So yeah, I never got to meet him, but I, I met the rest of the family. The good people. I like, I like Tom. Tom's, Tom's fun. Tom's a fun guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Buzzard passed away in December. I think it was December 26, 1993. Oh, wow. Way before then. Yeah. So, oh yeah, he's been he's been, but you know he's kind of the one that started the whole, got you know us going and all that. I think if it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't be prospecting today. Oh yeah, he, you know he just he just plain and simple showed you how to find it and uh, matter of factly, you know it was like easy for him as easy as Michael Jordan makes a basket and uh, he was good with people and uh, people responded with him and to him, you know. Nah, I'm going to sneeze. All right. Hold on, Joe. I got to play a commercial, okay? You got it. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. ICMJ, the International California Mining Journal, was first published in 1931, 93 years old this year. Since our first issue, our goal has remained the same, and that is to provide miners with a voice, a marketplace for their goods and services, and to offer expert advice and tips from our knowledgeable writers, miners, geologists, all in the field. We still offer our 12 and 24 month print subscriptions, but keeping up with the times and with our reader requests, the digital online subscription option allows for a simple and gorgeous reading experience using your preferred technology, your phone, your tablet, or computer. Sign up for our print online or both print and online at www.icmj.com or call us at 831-479-1500. For our advertising services, both display advertising and classifieds, select the miners market section or call us. Happy prospecting. Happy prospecting. Happy Steve Collier. Hello, rubber ducky prospecting. Hello. Hey, here's a question for y'all. See how smart you are. What animal lays eggs and is not a bird? An animal that lays eggs and yet is not a bird. <laughs> Let's see how many people are Googling that right now. Okay. So we're talking to old Joe. Joe, Joe. Uh, Oh, man, you're so quick there. You're so smart. Janon Snakes is not an animal. Prickly Prick Prospecting. Got it. Not a gator. It is a platypus. <laughs> I heard that on the radio today. So I just had to share that with you guys. Richard Duke, platypus. Platypus. Oh, you were better off with your first answer. Prickly, prickly. <laughs> turtle should have stayed there. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking to old Joe. Joe, Jack, you're the gold dude that I go to for an answer to all my questions. If 
you don't have the answer, you will find out much appreciate. Oh, well, aren't you just such a sweetheart? Uh, I better, uh, I got better give you a present here. I got something for you. Uh, I'll have to save it. Maybe I'll give it to you later or something. Uh, turtles lay eggs too. Yeah, but are turtles an animal though? That was the thing, animal. Okay, so, okay, so what? So you go. So you're doing that. So what kind of equipment is there setting up? You said it's a floating wash plant. So what is it on water or pond or something or? Well, from what I understand, the wash plant he has is a uh, on is a is a floating wash plant. So they they just flood the cut, and wow. they flood the cut and feed the material. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and that's what I like. I said I have haven't had eyes on it yet, and uh, very limited description. So uh, I'll know here later in a week for sure. So up in Nome, do you get to do any dredging? I did uh, actually. Uh, uh, a friend of mine and I uh, bought a dredge last year, and uh, um, I did a little dredging. Um, it's it's hard work. I'll tell you what, it is hard work. Um, just making sure all your equipment's working properly, and uh, uh, making sure you, you have air. And uh, and just we had a small uh, um, what do you call it? A certain what do you, serve a break a dredge, a little pontoon dredge, and um, that. Uh, a ladder dredge is kind of what the description is. They have two long aluminum ladders. And they put uh, um, inflatable pontoons under it, a hard deck on top that has your uh, sluice box and your pump system and your air system. And they actually, uh, 10 years ago, there's probably 30 or 40 of those available and they would rent them out for the summer. But uh, we got one last year and uh, we got it out a few times and had some fun with it. And we brought it uh, into some of the washes where the, the tundra washes down into the beach and we brought it into those washes there and cleaned stuff out of there and uh, found a lot of golden doors because you can move so much material other than you know, other than using your shovel. So yeah, it was a fun experience, but I sold that dredge at the end of the season and uh, I'll probably get a bigger one uh, this season or next season because there's a lot of money to be made with the dredge in the ocean. Oh, oh yeah. So when you're up there on the, uh, on the, uh, on the beach are you allowed to get in any of the creeks that are coming in there or not or is it just strictly oh, the beach oh oh no sure yeah you can you can dig in the creeks and stuff like that but there's you know most of it's most of it's just uh, uh um drainage from the tundra because the tundra is always thawing during the during the summertime so there'll be certain areas that uh, will have the runoff the runoff from the tundra um so it's just a, a constant like uh what you call it a spring so, but yeah, there's, they've got the Penny River and the, um, and Cripple River that are about 11 and 12 miles respectively down the west side of the beach. And those all have claims on them. So anything within the, like I say, that five mile marker that has water, you can, you can play in and stuff. And, uh, I'm not too sure about like inland because you have all these little creeks and stuff like that, that come out. Um, and feed stuff, and I don't mess around with inlets. I don't know the rules up, up there for that, but uh, I know there's people that go in there with uh, some of the creeks with four inch and three inch dredges, and there might only be like two feet of water, and they'll just be laying in there with their mask and cleaning out the bottom, and they find gold. Um, but that's something I haven't done yet. I would, I was absolutely would love to do that though. So uh, up so up there, you talked about you know like Penny and the Cripple. Uh, well, have you seen the old GPA? camp is that still standing or what does that look like today that looks like uh, a ghost town a lot of the buildings have um, given into the the weight of the snow um and of course people have gone through and grabbed the this and that's off the walls and you know got their memorabilia or whatever they wanted to and uh and weather and age is kind of pushing the thing down so there's a lot of, a lot of the old buildings aren't standing anymore so and I think somebody else got the. I think somebody else bought the claim too, and I, I don't know who that is. Oh. I think I heard something about that last uh, last summer. Oh, because I know that when he uh, sold everything else off, he kept he kept gold beaver and he kept Alaska. So, but I didn't hear that he sold it off or anything. Yeah, well, maybe it's maybe just somebody's uh, paying royalties to work the land. That might be too. Oh. Yeah. So. Because uh, a lot of people, a lot of a lot of the old GPA people are still up there. Um, uh, there's quite a few guys that uh, bought some claims inland, 
or, or, and uh, they're working that. And uh, I know I, when I bought some property last year, there's a couple old gentlemen that used to work at the old GPA camp. They bought land right next to me. And uh, a lot of us just haven't left Nome. And, and like me with my land, I'd like to put up a couple more buildings so people would interest would uh, have a place to stay when they come up and play on the beach and just check out Nome. Um, so, yeah. So a lot of us are just staying up there because the gold's up there. It's a nice... You know, have you been to Alaska? It's one of those places that you either love it or you don't. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, when I was up there, when I went with the GP, I was up there in 07. I was there probably almost seven weeks, and, and I couldn't wait to get home. I just, you know, <laughs> you're, 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 you're on an island, like, and, you know, cell phone service didn't work. You had to walk to the corner to try to get out on a phone call. And it just, I, you know, you can only go to town so many times and, but when I went up there, I went up there in 20, I think it was 21 to AKAU. And I was only there for two weeks. And I enjoyed that. I really had a lot of fun up there on that. So I would do that well, again. Yeah. So you, the telephone service, you had to drive on the road toward the Pomeranke mine that uh, once you yeah. can face Nome, then you could use the phone. Yeah. So it was called a telephone booth. You got to drive about two miles out of camp around the side of the mountain. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've done that too. I was at the um, AKAU in um, 22. So just a year after you. Oh, so, man. yeah. Yeah. I got some good gold up there and I didn't even have my 6,000 then. I found everything with the gold monster. Man, I'd love to be up there with that 6,000. I could have some fun. There a lot of detectors go up there. Um, there's, you know, there's so many tailing piles up there that the old timers left, and they would throw out fist size, you know, uh, pieces of gold or, uh, or uh, nuggets of orange size of oranges and stuff like that. So everybody's looking for that one. Um, I held a 40 ounce nugget that uh, Bill Potter had in his possession. He was the local gold buyer in town until last year. Yeah. He sold a, he retired, but he had oh, that big nugget. Oh. I held that in my hand. Boy, that was wow. something to hold. That was something to hold. 40 ounces in your hand, one shot. That's yeah. yeah. I mean, when I was up there in uh, 07, old Bill Potter, I had, uh, I think I bought like about, I don't know what it was, $6,000 worth of gold from him. And after I bought all this gold, because, you know, Friday nights, they, all the vendors used to come into camp and all that yep. set up. And, and I had bought uh, like six grand I spent on gold. And I had all this gold, and I had to go to go to town and buy a safe to keep all that gold in. And I yeah. wasn't shipping that home. I I took I brought that back with me on the airplane when I left it. But I sold all that because I had the prospecting store then, and uh, I wished I would have bought more. How did you get through the metal detectors with all the gold oh, on you? Well, they they screen it. I mean, you know, they they look at it because when it's in your it's in your suit, like check on luggage. I mean, I didn't check it. I carried it through. And uh, they just go through with it and let it go. You know, Same with you. Yeah. I'll tell you what, last year, uh, last year when I came back in October, I had brought back three bags of uh, beach samples that have already been um, classified and uh, I got the magnetics out of it. And I had them in one gallon of bags. And there's only, you know, about this thick, you know, just about the size of a, a, a summer sausage. And I had those in my uh, carry on luggage. And my luggage went through the thing. And I, I swear to God, cops came from everywhere. And not just regular, regular cops. These cops had stripes on them. And I'm like, what is going on? They opened my bag and, and gave me the, you know, summoned me here. And I went over and said, what's up? He says, is this yours? I said, yes. He opens it up and pulls out one of the bags and says, what's this? Uh, I said, those are mineral samples from the beaches of Alaska. He goes, we'll see. <laughs> and it took about five minutes. They did all their samples. They they uh, swab, swabbed my hands twice wow. uh, for, for whatever chemicals and stuff. And they finally decided, I said, it's sand. I promise you it's sand. And uh, so it's like, don't bring home your, your concentrates in your carry-on luggage, people. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. So, yeah, that was quite the oh. experience. Oh, yeah. I used to ship home, you know, for ships that fits. And I used to ship home. I mean, I would stuff those uh, boxes just full of black sands and ship them home. But generally, you know, going through the airport, I mean, up there anyway, they everybody knows, you know, what everybody's kind of doing, taking home the black sands and shit like that. Uh, 
some of the outer airports or you know something else they may think it's gunpowder or something else but oh yeah yeah adrian s uh i you know so when you fly into nome uh, i think you got to fly into what is that anchorage you fly into anchorage and then from anchorage you fly into nome yes so it's on a, a smaller plane and if you can't land because of the fog you know they got to have certain uh whatever so we couldn't land one time and we had to go up to uh the camp up above there i forget Close the name of that yeah yeah coastal Google or whatever we had to spend yep. a night there in the airport which kind of sucked but uh so yeah yeah i uh, i actually took an adventure because that's on the other side of the peninsula Nome is on the far west side and coastal is on the far east and uh I took a little adventure there that uh, this year um, to some of the, the uh, old mine sites, um, about 80 miles down the road to Coast View, and then um, 30 miles in a bug in buggies over the tundra and over the mountains and in the valleys. There's a, I think we had five river, river crossings, um, and I visited uh, three or four different uh, one, yeah, three three mines um, that uh, we were invited to, and then uh, the one that my host uh, was bringing me out there for. So. Uh, four mines all together so it's wow. my first first over the mountain over the tundra experience yep. yeah that that frozen tundra is uh that's pretty something like walking on sponges or something like that semi-frozen we got stuck five times two times wow. going in three times coming out um yeah we uh, we're lucky we had a jack with us and and, and of course our winches on our uh, atvs and stuff but you had to bring jack and wood you have to bring a, a wood so you jack up your buggy and and get a platform underneath each tire because if you try to do one tire and spin yourself out you're not going anywhere you got to make yourself a road underneath to get that extra oomph to get forward and then go back and pick up your wood because you need it again <laughs> so so where's your property at up there my property is six miles east of Nome on the Council Highway, right at the six mile marker. Yeah. You're all just so, on the highway right there. Okay. Yeah. Um, a Fort Davis is the, the, the area that's up there. It's a, a area where the uh, native uh, fishing villages line the uh, coastal coast area. So they'll have different village, uh, different uh, little camps for the different inland villages. They, they come in when the harvest is uh, ready to harvest they, the fish. Each have their own camp, and they catch the fish, and they dry them there. And yeah, so I'm just past that area, and uh, um, my I got mountains in my backyard, and tundra in the front yard, and my front view is the ocean. It's a beautiful piece of property. So, and, and the fish up there. So, so what? Where do you claim residency at? Uh, Minnesota. Oh, not Alaska, yeah. huh? <laughs> not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I, I needed to build a house first, so oh. I got that built. I got that built last year, and once I get it, you know, uh, more livable, you know, insulated. I just got the shell up last year. It's got to be insulated. You got to do the pl plumbing and stuff like that. So, uh, but once I get all that done, I may just make that transition. I don't know. And how long do you got to be there as a residence before you start getting the checks? The che is, you know these checks are only like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars a year, guys. You know, so <laughs> it's not what everybody thinks. It's just that some of the households have eight or nine people in them, so they'll they collectively get fifteen thousand dollars a household. You know, so yeah. But it, singularly, it's uh, like I think it's like twelve hundred sixty dollars this year. Oh. So, but there are other perks about being a resident. Uh, you can fly from uh, um, Nome to Anchorage for a really discount price, like thirty-five dollars or whatever, wow. and you're allowed to take you're allowed to take three totes with you, so you can uh, fill up with that at the grocery stores and get supplies in the Anchorage and uh, fly them back free. Um, that saves on shipping and stuff like that for the, the freighters and airplanes that uh, supply in Nome. So, yeah, there are perks, absolutely. That's one thing about Nome. Everything. I mean, I remember when I was up there, or both times, but. Uh, the you go into town in like a six pack you know like you might go to town here a six pack of beer might cost you uh you know like eight or nine bucks but there's like thirty dollars a six pack <laughs> all, right. all right i don't drink but every two days i would go to uh ac's is the, the grocery store there i get a 12 pack of mountain dew and a bunch of bananas one bunch of bananas 22 dollars 
Yeah. Or pull back in some bananas. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so uh, I quit drinking soda. Yeah, no, everything's uh, pricey up there because, you know, they got to yeah. barge everything. When, when I was at AKAU, we went out fishing one day and there was about six of us in the truck and somebody, we stopped at the store there and uh, somebody bought a big thing of beef jerky and, and he's passing it around. Everybody's taking some and it come to me and I saw the price tag on that, you know, it was like $40 for a bag of beef jerky. I just handed it on. <laughs> I'm not going to touch your beef jerky, dude. You spent that much money on it, you know. Forty-five dollars for a case of a bottled water, yeah. Yeah, that's unreal, man. Yeah, it really is. It really. Is. Well, gas is expensive. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, a lot of people did do their own hunting. Your harvest, uh, you know, they had the smelt run last year, which I had, uh, I got a chance to do. Uh, we scooped some smelt out of the ocean. Uh, uh, they're silver fish, about ten inches long, and they come into the break, and you can just scoop them up, and uh, then you, you clean up, really easy to clean up, and deep fry them, and uh, have a smelt fry. Yeah, they call them hooligans up there. We call them smelt down here. Um, yeah, so I got to do that. But, yeah, they harvest the uh, muskox. The natives can get the, a couple of muskox a year. And they got the salmon run, which was disrupted last year because of the hurricane the year before. We had no salmon last year. There was none wow. there because there was there was none able to come in and lay their eggs. So there was none, no fish in the ocean to come back to the rivers. Yeah, so they have to restock hey. the rivers to... Uh, get the get the they, circle of life going again do they eat muskox up there yeah absolutely a seal and walrus and whale wow and, i didn't know that yeah yeah there's a every every day you you'll find a a walrus on the beach uh um last year we seen our first whale on the beach a dead whale um a baby porpoise um yeah 20, yeah everything washes up on the beach up there right, no well, I remember if something was on the beach, everybody took off running out there with chainsaws because, you know, they want to, and sometimes the head's already gone before you get there because they want them tusk. Absolutely. I, 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 every animal I've seen was headless, every one of them. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen a with the helmet yet. Yeah, <laughs> I think they, they're watching it from a distance or something, and they're they're there, man. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. And then the bear. You know, if you're going to go out there and look for dead walrus and stuff like that, you better watch around because uh, there's some big bear walking those beach. Uh, oh, yeah. They'll walk right by you. Yeah, if you're going to camp out on West Beach, um, be prepared if anybody's out there thinking about going up to Alaska because there are bear uh, up there on the beach. So you have to keep a clean campsite. Um, there's plenty of uh, driftwood that people make little uh, uh, fences for bear shelter, you know, bear warning shelters around them. Most of the time, they're curious to just yell. Uh, nobody's had any problem with the bear, but it's still scary. That's a big animal. So just be aware that those animals are going to be there and uh, the muskox, too. Um, a ranger got killed uh, last spring, I think it was. He had Gordon Alega by muskox. Um, they're not friendly. That's like playing with the buffalo in, uh, in you, the uh, park out there, the Yellowstone. So you give them their space and just leave them be. So, so do you, I remember being up there, we went around and I got a whole bag full of the, the fur that people just yes. go around and collect it off of the bushes and stuff like that. That's worth money. Dawn and I did that this year. We had about, uh, our, our barge got uh, uh, set back a couple of weeks. So we went, uh, um, we went and, and collected some of this fur and um, we collected uh, the, those t-shirt bags you get from Walmart. We collected like four of those full. And they were worth sixty dollars a bag just for fur. Wow. So, yeah. Where, where do you cash them in at? There are people that uh, up there. There's a, a a site called Gnome Post. Um, that's okay. kind of the community deal there. And there are a few people that spin their own uh, yarn, right? So they'll wash it and they they put it on their uh, those little brushes where they rake it uh, smooth, and then they put it on their spinning wheel and they make yarn out of it. And then they'll then they'll take it and give it to the people that make hats. And I'll tell you, if you get a hat or a pair of mittens made out of those, you will never be cold. That is the warmest fur ever. Um, but the hats are about two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. But they're handmade. I mean, right from like me and Don picking it off the bush to the lady that spins it to the lady that knits it. Um, it's a uh, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I would be. Uh, I'd be. Well, if you're on the well, the fish. I mean, you know, I know you can fish for the salmon there on the ocean but uh 
when they're coming into like uh, the penny or the cripple, you know, they're, they're really not biting. They're more, they're going up to spawn, but still, I mean, that was some good, uh, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed just getting the salmon and cooking them right there on the beach. That was, that was pretty cool. We did a lot of that, 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 that camp there. And they told us if you want to fish, just sport fish to you know, file the barb off. Cause you're right. The, the, there's a uh, certain salmon that were just going to their spawn, but like, uh, was it the silver or something like that? I'm not real up on it. There's a couple of different kinds that they were attacking the hooks, so you didn't even have to use a barb. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Then they tell you you throw all your fish when you, that you don't want in the water to uh, you know, feed the feed the crabs, not the bears. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they're not looking to bite, so when they see your thing, they they knock it out of the way, and that's yeah. so you're snagging them. But uh, yeah, so we used to catch them like that. All and the only ones you don't eat is the ones they used to call the humpies. We used to just throw them back in. Oh yeah, they're the ones that are going to turn red real quick. Well, once they grow that hump on them, then they're no good. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't get a chance to fish up there. I've never actually fished up there in all the years I've been up there. I uh, end up mining or exploring. Cool. Gold Hunter seventy seven. Hello and welcome. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, so so, you, how long are you up there? Going to be up there, in Nome for? Nome. Um. Well, I will. I always go up there uh, about June, right about June, and I'm there till about first week in October. Is usually when I'm uh, get out of there. But now that I have a place, um, I may stay a little bit longer than October. It depends on the weather. Well, snow will be coming in around that time. Well, exactly. I'm, I'm used to snow. I live in Minnesota, but uh, oh, okay. yeah, I got, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. that, I, you know, in the snow, if I need to button things up and I'm leaving, um, I got to get that done before the snow comes, you know, so it's a little harder to do when the snow's already there, so. Cool, man. Yeah. Oh, I'd be up there. I'd be taking advantage of, I'd be getting a good metal detector and detecting up there. Oh, I absolutely will. I absolutely will. Now that I have a place to uh, keep on. Matter of fact, when I came to you, you said, you looked at me and said, where's all your stuff? When you looked at my truck and said, you don't have a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> all my stuff's in Alaska, Jack. Everything. I, uh, I had to buy a, um, a nice beginner starter kit, the 17-piece uh, kit that uh, GPA puts out. You got the shovel, you got um, three pans and uh, the, a few stuffer bottles and a magnet, everything you need. Um, but that's all I need because uh, right here, and I'll get a shovel from the hardware store. But uh, yeah, all my tools are up there. Now I got extras down here, so I need more storage, <laughs> just like every other miner. Yeah. Yeah, different places. No, I, I always can. It, it's cool up there. I mean, there's some good gold up there in Nome. Uh, that's some of the biggest pieces of gold I've ever seen has come from Nome. And it's, you know, like with the AKAU, you know, they, they lease property, then they go up there and scrape it down with the dozer and, expose new ground all the time and but yeah there's a lot of good gold up there yeah i you, i haven't been able to do that you've got a chance to do that. i'd like to go and, and do that after you do a scrape that'd be kind of fun yeah and that's yeah. on the back side of king mountain there isn't it well where, they got where, their you know, on the other side of the mountain right where they screw the scraping yeah clear way up there yeah you got a yeah little drive you go way up in there but you, there's all that area back up in there that you can just detect on there's just so much of that oh absolutely everything yeah yeah the so, uh earlier today i got i got bit by a bee oh were you working that net? were you working on that nest on the side no i was just walking back there and i got too close to it and one nailed me on the arm so i took a benadryl yeah. my, my whole arm is swollen up it's all swollen you rem they remember you jack yeah yeah so, <laughs> yeah, so i took a benadryl and it's kind of knocking my ass out that was a few hours ago but man it does it's, it's itching bad and it's swelling pretty bad yeah you got it it's mice on there maybe that may be some good probably some good thing to do but uh yeah i'll sleep good tonight so damn bees. So, uh, uh, what, what, what's your partner doing? Where's he at? Sleeping? Um, no, actually, I don't know. He actually he made uh, us a salmon dinner, um, and uh, 
I had thought the uh, show started at 5.30, and he had it ready at 5, and uh, my dinner's sitting on the table. And I think oh, he went for a walk. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, uh, I think he went for a walk. Oh, yeah, my arm is really... You can see my arm swollen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see it's got a little purple-red color to it, too. Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's it itches, too. But, yeah, it's... Uh, well, uh, we'll let you eat. We'll let you go eat your dinner. So, hey, before we let you go, being a prospector, Joe, uh, what probably piece of advice you'd give somebody that maybe just starting out, or maybe somebody wants to go up to Nome or something like that? Well, for the people that are starting out, um, I think the the biggest thing that stops you is just the the fear and uncertainty. But there's no need for it. There are so many people out there. You can just talk to somebody who's doing it, and they will most likely help you uh, get into it um, um people that want to go to go up to Nome, know that you're going to need um money for a place to stay food is twice as expensive and um you're pretty much on your own you know so if you're going to go out there uh, uh, yeah just make sure you have an exit strategy there's a lot of people that go up there and they think they're gonna get rich um right away and they have no way to get home so but yeah just <laughs> use your head yeah, use your head and uh, uh, keep yourself safe. So do you think it's better to go up there, like, to join one of them outfits, like AKAU? I know there's some other places over around them other places that you can drive to, but no, you have to fly into, and I think that's why there's probably good gold up in there. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know they got the AKAU, they got the chicken camp up there, and uh, <clears throat> um, that would be, if you want the Alaskan experience, uh, take one of those camps that's a really good idea because you'll get the feel of the equipment you know the the area and uh just the awesomeness of it all first um and then you can come back to another time with a educated outlook on what you want to do awesome all right joe we'll let you go go enjoy your dinner we appreciate you stop by taking some time and talking with us bud well thank you for having me out there jack and ha having me on the show Hey, take care. Say hi to everybody, and uh, we'll catch you down the road, Joe. Thanks, man. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Thanks to Joe for hanging out with us. We let him go. Uh, he's he's busy as he's traveling by, traveling on. So anyways, uh, okay, we saw everybody, a donkey in a tent. That, that's a good video, a good uh, thing, a donkey in a tent. Richard Gibson, welcome. Anyways, all right, guys, so uh, that's about it. You can go to uh, goldfeverradio.com and uh, check anything out or goldfeveradventures.com. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Join us on YouTube. Check out the videos. Uh, so you guys all take care. Have a fantastic week. I'm heading to Mead View tomorrow. I got to go up there and try to find me some gold and some meteorites. And then after I come back, we kind of started the wheel, but then uh, I hesitated it because I want I need to put some gold in there. So we will get to that after I get back. But anyway, you guys all take care. Appreciate all you guys hanging with us, spending another week with us. Be safe, everybody. Go out and get some gold. Thanks, everybody. See you all later. <laughs>